In the Super History of the Vocaloids HD Part 1, we learned about the beginning of the Vocaloid software and the first two Vocaloids to be released commercially. If you have not watched that video yet, I highly recommend you do so as this episode builds on the information presented in Part 1. You can click on the doohickey in the top right of the video there to go watch it. Go ahead, we'll wait for you. So in Part 1, I mentioned that Zero-G released a third Vocaloid product in the year 2004. And that product was Miriam, released in the UK on July 1st of that year. Since Miriam was released so soon after Leon and Lola, you'd expect the products to be very similar, but Miriam found ways to set herself apart. There's a lengthy article posted on the New York Times website about the then-upcoming Vocaloid synthesizer. Published in the November of 2003, the article mentioned Miriam as an upcoming product, so we know that her software was in development at that time. But even right here, there's a significant difference between Miriam and Leon and Lola, because we were told who provided the samples for Miriam's voice. Miriam Stockley is a South African-born British singer, who you might recognize from the group Ademus, or even her solo work. Obviously, she lent both her name and voice to the Miriam synthesizer, but the article mentions that she was quite reticent at first. As a professional singer, the idea of a company packaging her voice to sell to anyone with a few hundred dollars in their pocket was a little terrifying, and this was not a fear unique to her. I don't know what convinced her, but Miss Stockley eventually agreed to record the samples for the synthesizer, giving the explanation that has become a well-known quote regarding Vocaloid. You can't fight progress no matter how strange it sounds. Miss Stockley's face also graces the box, and the product was advertised as being born from her voice, the complete opposite of what happened with the earlier Vocaloids. Leon and Lola had anonymous voices built around a singing style, but Miriam's release revolved around a well-known singer's voice and lacked a strong preference for any particular styles. The biggest way Miriam set herself apart was that she sounded so much more natural than Leon or Lola did. You'll notice it when we get to the song demonstrations. Miriam just sounds so much more human. And I can't exactly pinpoint why that is. Yamaha made the comment in regards to Miriam's release that the quality of the synthesis is much better. But what precisely that means, I don't know. There's little doubt that Zero-G took lessons they learned from programming Leon and Lola to improve the development process for Miriam. But some reviews of Miriam provide us with a more tangible clue. Essentially, if you combine their information, they both mention or imply that Miriam's voice database was larger than Leon or Lola's. Specifically, that more samples were recorded for Miriam's voice. That could explain why Miriam sounds so much less synthetic than they do, despite the products releasing in the same year. A review at Sound on Sound also mentions that Miriam released at a lower price compared to Leon and Lola at their UK launch, 150 pounds compared to 200 pounds. These improvements earned Miriam some success, but there were a couple of hitches as well. Leon and Lola received a lot of promotion and advertisement in the US, at least in the music technology markets. If you were in the industry, then you likely heard the buzz about them at the very least. Miriam, on the other hand, only received a limited release in the UK. She was not marketed in the US. This may have been because Zero-G felt that a British-accented vocalist would not be appealing to American musicians, but it meant that her potential customer base was a lot smaller. And while Miriam's launch price was less than Leon and Lola's launch price in the UK, by the end of 2004, Leon and Lola had their prices cut to £125 each. I don't know if their soul singer stylings attracted many British customers, but it did make Miriam the most expensive of the three at the time. There was also one other matter. 
Leon and Lola had no competition when they released. But around the April of 2004, a German company named Viersen released the first version of its own idea for a voice synthesizer for music, named Cantor. On the surface, there were a lot of similarities between Cantor and Vocaloid, and many parallels were drawn between the two programs because they were pretty much the only such products on the market at the time. I won't go too deeply into Cantor, but suffice it to say, some people saw the two softwares as competitors, which was, eh, partly true. While both Vocaloid and Cantor were voice synthesizers, Viersen did not use samples from real singers to aid in the production of Cantor synthesis. Cantor was essentially working on the same principles as any number of speech synthesizers that had come before. What made it kind of noteworthy, though, was that it did it so well, and with a simple but powerful interface. But Cantor was never intended to be a competitor to Vocaloid, as it was not designed to produce realistic vocals, just reasonably good voice-like sounds. The kind that a musician would use as a sound effect or a sound clip. In that usage case, Cantor could actually be superior to Vocaloid because of how much easier the program was to use, the large number of voices it offered, and how much more finely the output could be adjusted. But if you wanted a voice synthesizer that could sing respectable backup vocals, or especially the lead vocals in a song, Vocaloid remained in a league of its own. Of course, the number of musicians who were willing to put in the hard work necessary to make Vocaloid sing good lead vocals was already pretty small, and I doubt Cantor's introduction had much of an impact on them. Even so, I mention Cantor here because this relationship between the two programs did get a fair bit of press back in the day. Something I forgot to mention in episode 1 was that Lola has the honor of being the first Vocaloid to have its voice used in a film's soundtrack, the 2006 animated movie Paprika. I knew this little factoid, but for some reason I forgot Lola was the Vocaloid used. I thought it was someone else. Sorry about that. Moving back to Miriam, though, we should talk about a little music software company called Jasmine Music Technology. Or perhaps I should say we should have a little talk, because there isn't much information available about the company, and its site hasn't been updated since 2010. But apparently, the founder of the company and another member helped with testing the Vocaloid engine in 2003, possibly up through 2007. In the process, they wrote and produced a bunch of songs for Leon and some other early English Vocaloids. The team even developed a program called YV Enhancer, which would help you to achieve more realistic results with Vocaloid voices, though for whatever reason the project was abandoned before it was completed. Now I'm bringing this all up because this duo wrote a song for Leon called Sad Mondays, and a Miriam version of this song was performed with a live band in Russia in the December of 2004, the first live performance of a Vocaloid voice. Not the first time a Vocaloid was publicly demonstrated, but the first time a Vocaloid performed a song to a concert audience while accompanied with a band. Miriam's performance was just one song in a four-hour concert called the Polyphony Studio 5th Anniversary Concert, and Jasmine Music has a download for a recording of that actual Miriam performance still up. I'll be able to play it for you in the song section, so look forward to that. Miriam's sweet voice has garnered her many fans over the years, and they ran into the same problem that befell Leon and Lola fans how to represent her visually. While the Vocaloid Miriam was based on the voice of Miriam Stockley, never did anyone consider the two to be interchangeable, nor was Miriam advertised to be able to exactly reproduce Miss Stockley's singing abilities. So, visually representing Miriam as looking identical to Miss Stockley wouldn't make sense. Miriam had her own sound, her own voice, so she needed her own look, too. There is a curious aspect to the more popular fan-made designs for Miriam, and that is that she is usually portrayed with silver hair, rather than blonde hair, probably because the photo of Miss Stockley on Miriam's box had a silver tint applied to it. Not that I'm complaining, I happen to like girls with silver hair, 
and I blame the development of that infatuation on the movie Green Legend Vran, which is a great flick, you should all go watch it. Aside from the silver hair, Miriam is also commonly shown wearing a long black coat, though other designs like to sneak the color green into her outfit for some reason. Because almost all Vocaloid products from this point forward would possess visual character designs in some form, Leon, Lola, and Miriam are among the few that lack them. Zirji was apparently considering giving the trio a fresh coat of paint, so to speak, in 2010, but disappointingly, nothing came of that. When Leon and Lola were taken off the shelves around 2006, Miriam went away with them. At the time, their lack of sales was attributed to an industry-wide trend away from indie music in the English-speaking world, or at least the kind of indie music that would potentially take advantage of vocal synthesizers. As I said in the previous episode, these zero-G vocaloids became available again in 2008. However, currently, none of the first-generation vocaloids can be purchased, and that includes Miriam. While it was possible to continue to buy these three Vocaloids after they were retired by emailing Zero-G directly, I believe they stopped doing this for Leon and Lola a while ago, but they definitely stopped doing it for Miriam in 2015. All of the serial codes that were generated for Miriam by Yamaha have been issued or used, so Zero-G has no way of selling additional copies of her software, period. The only way to legally obtain her now would be to find an unopened box and pray that Yamaha still activates Vocaloid 1 serial keys when you find it. Now, there was a little bit of hope for Miriam fans as, in March of 2015, Miss Stockley tweeted that she would be interested in recording a new Vocaloid vocal library, as the technology had come so far in the 12 years since she recorded for the Miriam Vocaloid. People got really excited at the prospect of an updated Miriam. Unfortunately, Zero G did not echo the sentiment because of the costs it would entail. It's very disappointing, but hopefully someday we can see it happen because there's definitely some demand for it. People are still composing songs for Miriam in 2016 because her soft and sweet voice remains unique among English vocaloids to this day. We see. 